have a confession to make. Um, before, but before I share my confession, um, I want all of you to share your little confession to me. Okay? Raise your hand, all right, raise your hand, if you have ever failed a test or an exam for a subject before. Oh, <laughs> that's like almost uh, everybody in the room. <laughs> oh my God, okay. I'm so excited I forgot my clicker, sorry. <laughs> All right, okay, so everybody have uh, failed a test or an exam uh, in your schooling life before. So this is my confession, right? I actually also failed um, all, all my tests and exams for H2 mathematics up to A-levels. Um, and, and yet, I was actually teaching uh, mathematics. Uh, <laughs> uh, my worst subject, right, uh, as a MOE teaching intern when I was in uh, secondary school. So this is a picture of me uh, actually at a farewell uh, after my three months uh, internship. Uh, I, at least the students are still happy, uh, even though uh, that was my worst uh, subject. <laughs> I remember still trying to revise algebra in the library before my first class. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, so if all of us here have experience with failure before in our schooling life, um, then the question really is, how can we design schools to be more failure friendly for our students today? You know, the topic on failure in our education system is not new, all right? We, we have uh, talked about it, we have debated about it, and you know, it's good to see some structural adjustment um, in the last few years, you know, for example, um, you know, for the PSLET score changing from a, a point system to an achievement level system, um, removing exams um, so that students have time to enjoy learning and, and all that. Uh, I believe these structural changes um, are great hardware changes to the um, education system. But I feel that more can be done to update our software right, in our education system. And by software, I'm actually referring to things like school environment, the languages we use when we interact and talk to our students, the programs that we run, the initiative that we run for our students that teach them or encourage them to fail. Right? Because I believe that for, for a, a, an education institution that have the right environment, the right ecosystem, can inspire and shape mindsets of the individual students that you work with uh, every day. So if you allow me, I would like to share my own personal story uh, of how my, going, my own school environment growing up actually shaped my perspective, uh, my mindset on failure and growth. So on the top left, uh, that's me actually uh, in secondary school. I remember when I was in secondary one, I actually rejected uh, to join student council because uh, I felt that I, was, I will screw up my studies. And, uh, and you know, being a secondary one, you, you are just stepping into a secondary school, not knowing about what's gonna happen. I was afraid that I couldn't cope. But it was my ACC teacher, appreciation of Chinese culture teacher, not accounting, all right, <laughs> that actually um, inspired me and changed my mind. Right? She said this to me, hey Felix, you know, I saw that I think that you have great leadership potential in the way that you interact with your peers. And it would be a pity if you do not live up to that potential. And it was because of those words that actually um, inspired me to take that leap of faith into student leadership. And in the second um, frame, during my student council time together with my batch mates, you know, we try to do things differently instead of just you know, copying or referencing the templates that our senior have shared with us to run programs or run events like Teacher's Day and things like that. We decided to do, we, and one of the key moments I remember very clearly was that we decided to challenge the long-standing school rules that we have in our secondary school. So back then, I'm not sure if it's still the same now, um, students were not allowed to eat in classrooms. Okay, because uh, they are afraid that um, the, classes, uh, the classrooms will become dirty and unhygienic for learning. But the situation at that point in time was that the classrooms were already dirty, all right? And because the students, for, the students didn't have that ownership 
to clean up the classrooms, and a lot of times, it's the cleaners that come in at the end of the day that clean up the classroom. So we decided to say, hey, let's go and uh, speak to the school principal. And we're, like, and we're like, okay, why not let students eat in class? In exchange, the students have to keep their classroom clean up to a certain cleanliness standard. All right, and um, so the student counselors, instead of guarding the canteen for people who are smuggling food back into classes, we now patrol the classes every week right, to, to basically rate every classroom's cleanliness out of 20 points. All right, and if they consistently score below 12 points, the classes lose their privilege to eat food in class. So we were very thankful that um, our school leadership was open uh, minded enough for us to try an experiment and even fail, even though that this is actually a school rule, school rule that we are talking about. All right, and uh, we piloted it in a, a, a secondary one and secondary four cohorts, and uh, we were very happy to see that the classrooms actually uh, dramatically improved in terms of cleanliness because students take ownership of you know, um, the classroom cleanliness because they want to have the privilege of eating in class. And the, the third frame was actually um, me in Mount Kinabalu as a 16-year-old that have not exercised very much, uh, climbing all the way to the peak of Mount Kinabalu. Um, and it was because of pro school programs like that that gave me a chance and exposure right, to really learn about failure and resilience um, through the different the initiatives that the school have run. So all the things I've shared about my secondary school journey the school environment played a huge role to encourage experimentation, to encourage failure. That shaped me to be who I am. So fast forward, uh, moving to JC, graduating to JC. Right? I actually chose uh, the most, one of the most common subject combinations uh, known as uh, PCME, right? physics, chemistry, maths, and uh, economics. For those that went JC, how many of you chose PCME? <laughs> Oh, not many. Oh, okay. All right. Then the other most popular one is BCME. Uh, <laughs> so I, I chose PCME even though I sucked really badly at sciences and math, right? Uh, as you can tell from my report card. Um, and um, I excelled actually in humanities, in economics, my only subject <laughs> that barely made, uh, at least made, made a B uh, in my, my test, right? Um, and all of this was uh, actually because of a practical reason. Because for A-levels, right, you need to get a certain rank points. Right? And sciences and math, you only have one fixed answer. Right? It's just about how there is then about practicing and understanding the concept to get to that right answer. So probably, probability-wise, you have a higher chance of being more certain of the grades you can get. But for humanities, I'm sorry the humanities teacher here, it's a little bit more ambiguous. Right? Um, it's, uh, it's, your answers is subjected to interpretation. So you have lesser you know, uh, ability to master your, uh, your destiny. <laughs> All right? um, and, and actually, I would say that in my JC time, is one of the most stressful period of my educational journey because I was, uh, I was doing two CCAs, trying to juggle studies. Um, yeah, but uh, naturally, th that didn't work out well for me. So, but I was very, very grateful to actually have strict yet um, nurturing teachers um, that actually took care of me. But you see the picture on the right, uh, the lady in a um, black dress and uh, a, a red strap over here. She's actually my H2 mathematics teacher. <laughs> so despite me failing all my tests uh, in uh, mathematics, um, she encouraged me to continue to work hard, to co not give up, when, even when I said that I wanted to drop it to H1. So I, I stuck to it, worked hard, and thankfully at A-levels, I managed to get a B. <laughs> um, and I think all of this goes to show that school environment plays a pivotal role um, in helping students shape the mindset and the values uh, that you want to see in them. And this can even be shown in pursuit of you know, academics as well. So all these experiences from secondary school to junior college 
actually led me to start Skillio when I was uh, in university in year one. Um, and when we started Skillio, the main problem statement that we were trying to solve was how do we help young people be recognized for their differentiated abilities beyond just academic success, right? I started as a student founder with zero experience. I've never done business before. I have no startup experience. Um, and I met with a lot of um, mistakes and failures as well. One of the biggest failures I had uh, that I still remember was when we first started out. So we wanted to build a, a mobile application that basically helped secondary school students to track their reflections and turn those reflections into a soft skills portfolio that they can use for EAE admissions, for DSA, and so on. So we were so passionate, we just dived right in to code out everything. And to our horror, when we were about to launch the app, we realized that back then, students were not allowed to use their phone in class during curriculum time. So we were like, oh no, we just spent all this time, all this effort, all these resources, um, but it's going to go completely to waste. But I think it's moments like that that actually um, led me to think about how do we improve from the process to take failure as a learning experience to fail forward. And I even took a leave of absence uh, from university for about a year to actually focus full time on Skillio. And I'm happy to say that up to today, uh, we are still running it. We have impacted more than 10,000 students in Southeast Asia um, through the different programs and uh, initiatives um, that we run. Looking back, all of this uh, experience I had in JC in secondary school really strongly influenced me to be doing to do what I'm actually doing uh, right now uh, with with Skillio and the impact that I'm creating. And I dare say that without those experiences, uh, without those failure moments in, in school, in the school environment that I was brought up in, I wouldn't be where I am today. So if I can summarize uh, my own lived experience into a simple framework about failure, is that in the school environment that I was in uh, growing up, some of the common aspects were that I felt psychologically safe to try new ideas, to experiment, to fail. I had a role model that believed in me, that you know, believed in what I want to do, the goals I set for myself, believed that I can do it despite the odds. I had a good environment for me to be vulnerable, to cry, to be stressed, and to fail, knowing that my teachers will be there to pick me up you know, when I'm ready to bounce back. And lastly, you know, uh, being able to design, uh, going through failure moments that were simulated through the different school programs and initiatives that I was able to take part in. And all of these ingredients actually you know, allowed me to develop a failure-proof mindset uh, in the work that I do today and in the future as well. So I would say that designing failure for your students is so important, even for the future, because these failure experiences that you create in a safe environment in school help students learn how to deal with bigger failures when they graduate into the world. And, we and when we talk about the future, about how VUCA it is, about innovative technology like generative AI, about automation disrupting jobs, what we are seeing are employers actually looking out for failures in candidates because those are badges of honor that they know will keep this, that the talents will be able to be you know, resilient and comfortable with the uncertain world that the company is going into. So in summary, the success of your students does not lie with the success of their academic pursuit. It actually lies in the journey of getting them from where they are to the, their own desired end goal or outcome. My personal story about failure and the school environment I, I'm in is not new. There are many others who have went through the school system, went through the school environment that they are brought up in, and have, been, have grown to be um, stronger uh, and more failure-proof. So because, they, because all of this were engineered by great school environment. 
I want to leave you with this, right? We fail our students by not letting them fail. And I empathize fully that all of you educators here are already overworked, have multiple responsibilities, hats to wear, but you guys are at the forefront of creating the environment for your students to fail. And I challenge all of you to go to think about how do you design a failure-friendly environment in your classrooms, in your CCAs, in your project work, so that your students want to fail. Thank you. Thank you.